Well, this seismic profile comes from offshore uh, southern Italy in the southern Adriatic Sea, and it shows some pretty neat um, stratigraphic architectures. So let's have a go at interpreting it. Well, on the profile, there's picked out the M reflector, which is actually the top of the Mycenaean, so the, sort of the uppermost Miocene uh, in the, this part of the Mediterranean. So all this stuff on top is quaternary. Anyway, let's pick the um, Mycenaean reflector. It's this really nice high amplitude package coming through here, like this, just run it all the way across. Right, this little fault, which I'll just pop in, another potential little fault there. Doesn't do very much, does it? Doesn't really destroy the reflector continuity. So we can take that across and we can just pop these little faults in. Something like that. Okay, let's keep going. And I can see another really prominent reflector that runs across here. Let's pick it. It's, it's really prominent here. So let's take that to the edge of the profile. Take this one all the way across, just picking it in brown. All the way through here, getting some little tiny faults. I'm barely gonna worry about those coming all the way across. And the interesting, whoops, and the interesting thing we can see is the separation between the brown and the blue reflectors decreases from left to right. How does it achieve that? Well, let's pick some more reflectors in the interval. Well, it's pretty transparent in this area, but we can start over here. We can see that this reflector comes along, whoops, and comes along and converges pretty much in here with the M reflector. So it's onlapping, and we can see the same sort of patterns occurring in here, maybe. Um, let's pick another reflector across. Oh, it's slightly folded, isn't it? It's going to be guided. Hard to see where that goes. We'll leave it for a minute. Let's take this one across. Take this all the way across. It's running pretty much parallel to the brown reflector. Maybe continuing through here. It's getting quite close now. Hard to tell through there. So I think these packages in here, if I had to be interpretive about this is that they come down like this. Oops, not quite that dramatically. To onlap onto the M reflector. So if a package of material in here, which is onlapping the blue reflector. Okay, so the blue reflector is folded but so too are these onlapping sediments and indeed the brown reflector coming across here. So I'm now going to move up to a shallower part and see if we can find where the folding has died out because the shallow structures in here are, and the, shallow, the shallow strata are essentially undeformed and horizontal. Well, I reckon that if I take a horizon through here, this looks like it's not doing very much, is it? It's basically just tracking all the way across. Well, as we come to here, maybe it's slightly faulted, it's slightly obscure through there, but I think it's pretty good. It comes all the way across. So basically, the deformation is done and dusted by the time the green horizon that we just picked was deposited. Okay, so this package in here, where the lower horizon, the brown, is folded and the green is not, is clearly a growth uh, succession where the strata are deposited as the fold was growing. Well, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Let's move now to the shallow part of the section where the rocks are undeformed, but they're still not horizontal. And we'll just look at this part of the section uh, next. Well, I'm just gonna pick the top surface in here, darker green. We can see it comes down through here. And perhaps if we take some of the reflectivity down here, we can take these reflectors down like this into this sort of position here. And I can see it do the same sort of thing in here where the reflectors come off this top surface, are inclined and then converge down like this. So we've got a package in here where the strata, where the strata reflectors are downlapping, converging downwards onto a gently inclined slash horizontal surface. That's pretty spectacular there, isn't it? That comes out a bit higher. There's another one in here that comes down, perhaps something like this. So we've got a package of strata in here that are defined by Kleiner forms like this and a pretty spectacular top lap surface in here as the strata pinch out upwards, something like this. So a package of material that's prograded out 
from left to right. So let's just label that up. So we've got, we've got progradation out like this of the package of clinoforms. And we can see towards the toe sets in here, otherwise where the uh, clinoforms converge downwards, we've got a package out here that's essentially aggradational at the foot of the clinoform, so relatively deep water, and a package here above the clinoforms, which is aggradational, that is at the tops of the clinoforms, that presumably represents a relatively shallow water environment. Okay, let's turn our attention again now to slightly deeper in the profile. And in these positions in here, we have this growth succession. I'm just going to pick some reflectors through it just to see what's going on. See that the fold there comes and goes. Pretty gentle through here, isn't it? And then comes and goes like that. So we can see that this pick I've got through here is sort of intermediate between the brown and the light green in terms of its folding. Another fold cut there comes up through here. Folded more like the brown there, this one, isn't it? So we come along like this. Yeah, it's pretty folded, isn't it? Something like that. So in here, we can see that the strata thin across the fold and expand across the fold into the syncline. Again, in here, what can we see? Well, it's pretty subtle. The fold's tapering out. But you get a slight expansion in the syncline relative to the anticline as we go across. Well, we could do this a bit more carefully as we go across in here. But either way, this succession in here is the growth sequence. In other words, it's sin kinematic. Well, what about the package below the brown and just above the Mycenaean marker in here where there was onlap? You might think that this was sin kinematic also with respect to the folding, but this onlap surface goes right across the folds with the same sense. And as we look at some of the shallower section in here, as we picked it, we can see that the strata retain thickness as we go across individual structures. So this is a pre-kinematic package with respect to the folding pre. Well, let's just look a bit deeper and below the M reflector and see what's going on. And I'm just gonna pick this horizon here just to see what it does with respect to the M. And it's looking pretty parallel to it through there. It's slightly faulted, of course, coming around here, slightly more obscure through these places. So these sediments directly underneath the M reflector show no evidence of thickening and thinning across the folds. So again, that also is part of the pre-kinematic succession with respect to the folding. So I'm just going to put that pre again, but I'm going to be clear now. This is fold, pre-fold, pre-fold. We can complete this to say that this package up here is post fold. Now we're not going to confront this here, but within the deeper part of the succession, there looks like there's a bit more going on. The imaging is really obscure, but there's clearly some deformation down in here. But presumably most of this deformation, apart from the regional folding that we've already picked, there's some deformation in here and some complexity that predates the Mycenaean and this late Mycenaean strata that we picked out in orange, which otherwise seals it. So there's a question mark in here, early structures. And by early, we mean pre endomycinian that marker package that goes over the top. Okay, well, let's now summarize this onto a chronostratigraphic chart. And for that, we'll just reframe the view. Okay, so now we can plot a chronostrat chart down in here using the seismic interpretation from above, just to illustrate how the stratigraphy works. Well, normally I'd start with the shallow and work deeper, but this time I'm going to start doing it slightly differently. Let's start off by putting an M reflector on. So here is our Mycenaean or top Mycenaean horizon that goes all the way across the profile. Like that. And it's underlain by that orange horizon, which also goes all the way across. It's deposited everywhere and remains everywhere across the profile. So here's the pre Mycenaean pre-onlap geometry. Okay, well, I'm actually going to now do the plot on the brown horizon, which also goes all the way across, just so we can space out this diagram appropriately. I'm just going to put it in here. So brown goes all the way across the profile. What about the package in here between the 
Mycenaean and the brown uh, reflector known as this prefold package, which on laps, well, we can see these reflectors on the left-hand side pinch out, but extend progressively further across the profile as we go to younger strata. So we can just show that on here like this. Just schematically, something like that. Oops, that should be parallel and horizontal, of course. Misdrawn, put that all the way across here. This last one goes pretty much all the way across. Presumably pinches out somewhere on the side. So in other words, we've got an on-lap surface through here in geological time, like this, and this is no deposition. as the strata pinch out against the top Mycenaean reflector. Let's just tidy up some of these arrows. So, on lap. Therefore, the Mycenaean strata were tilted before the deposition of this earliest Pliocene package that comes over the top. Strictly then, we don't know what the time gap is in here time gap in fact so we might want to expand that out we don't know what the age of these are they're, they're younger than the Mycenaean we don't know how much younger there may be a gap in time during which the tilting occurred so tilt here right now let's move up section we'll put the light green horizon in now in the chronostrat chart I'll just put it in across here which marks just above the top of the deformation that created the folds. So that's that marker. Now let's think about what goes on in here in this interval, which is the sin folding package. Well, if we look in detail in here, we can see we haven't really picked any um, intraformational unconformities or pinch outs of the strata. The seismic um, image isn't brilliant, but we've certainly been able to correlate some of the system and some of the strata across all the folds so I'm tempted to think that all this package in here is just simply deposited all the way across. It's just there's different thicknesses. So I'm not going to pick any internal onlaps or anything like that in there. They may be, but they're really subtle and um, not continuously recurring on the flanks of the folds. But I will label this as sin folding. It's just that there'll be differential aggradation which builds up different thicknesses. Thin on the crest of the folds, the anticlines, thicker in the synclinal axes. Okay, now let's consider the shallow section. I'll just reframe us a minute. Okay, so we're gonna go up into this package here of the clinoforms and this progradational aggradational relationship, um, which lies above the light green reflector. And we can see that we've got um, at the bottom of here, we've got some reflectors, I'll just pick them all in green, One, that, some that go all the way across, that lie just above the light green and have that relatively high amplitude that we can see a high frequency and high amplitude character. And then we can see that there are some other reflectors in here that clearly downlap onto that surface. And as we come across, we can see that they also have top lap relationships like that as we come across. But as we keep going, some of these top lapping packages run out right the way across the basin, what was the basin floor, to be aggradational. And then we can see that in these packages in here, they're deposited all the way across by the time we're up in here, they're just on clinoforms. So quite a complicated succession in here. Let's just annotate this down. We've got two areas of non-deposition, a non-depositional position in here. Okay, so I'll just write that ND for non-deposition. And another one here. ND, where these um, clinoform packages pinch out against the downlap surfaces. 
So in detail, quite complicated form. So sometimes you can accumulate sediment on top of the clinoforms, at other times not. Um, and so you can have aggradation and non-aggradation there. Similarly, sometimes the sediment can run out across the basin floor, at other times it's pinned to the base of the clinoforms. So there's quite complicated depositional packages developing in the shallow part of the succession in here. Okay, so let's just label those final lap relationships. Down lap here, and top lap. So we've got a variety of lap relationships um, that we can identify on our profile. Um, what's interesting is there's no evidence for erosional uh, unconformities in here. There's sediment accumulation, there's no erosion, there's just differential sediment accumulation as the structures developed through tilting, folding, and then the development of this shallow water system building out across the area. Final bit of housekeeping, let's just label up the Chronostrat diagram. Old, young, this is Plyo Quaternary, that's Lucinian down in here. So um, that's how it works. And we can see from the orientation of the seismic that this is west southwest, this is east northeast. So we can see that this shallow water progradational package is prograding relatively in here towards the east northeast from the west southwest. There's our simple cartoon uh, chronostrat diagram that illustrates the stratigraphic relationships that we've interpreted on the seismic profile from the Southern Adriatic.